this week we're talking about uh, leadership, but before we get into that, we're going to cover some things that hopefully will clear up some more stuff for you. So we're going to start here. Somebody tell me what is wrong with this. It has no period for one. Say it a little louder so everybody can hear you. It only has one period. Only one period, so it's a run-on sentence. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay? Good. What else? This is a discussion board post. This isn't anybody's in here, but, but this is a discussion board post. Is it not indented right? Or it is? I'm sorry? Is it indented right? And then, uh, don't worry about the ending. Don't worry about that. Okay. Don't worry about that. No references. No references. What else? No comment. The, the right punctuation in there, right? Punctuation. Yep. Well, she talked about that. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's not long enough. Anything else? Everything you said is correct. Um, for one, there's only one sentence, which is a run-on sentence, and we're supposed to have how many? Uh, At least five. So that's number one. Somebody else said there's no, no reference, no article, right? So that's, that's big. You have to have an article, so it's missing an article. Um, like I said, this is nobody's post in here, so don't worry, I'm not, I'm not putting anybody on Front Street. Um, but this, this was a real post from somebody at some point in time. Um, and so I'm, I wanted to share this with you so you can get an idea about what's wrong with it. Any, any comments about this? All right, let's go to the next one. What's right about about this one? It has a reference. It's long enough. It's long enough. It has the right punctuation. Punctuation. The so first sentence state what you're speaking about, speaking to. Okay, so they kind of introduced right. what they were going to say in the first sentence. Right. Anything else? Yes. The thing in the paragraph about the article is in the article. Right. Now we're getting to your question that you asked earlier. Um, so when you do your discussion, at the bottom you should list your reference, but you should also have what is called an in-text citation within your discussion. Um, and basically what an in-text citation is, is it lets you know that this came from the article. So um, if we go through this, this post, we can see that the first sentence, first couple of sentences are from that person's opinion. That's what they feel, that's what they believe, that's their stance. Now this sentence that starts here, cooperative association, blah, 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 they got from the article. How can I tell that? Because they cited it. At the end of the sentence, they cited it. Now, this isn't directly from the article because there are no quotation marks but they paraphrase, meaning they put it into their own words. Now, if you read something from your article and you put it into your own words, you still have to cite the author because it's not your idea. You would not have had that idea before you read the article. Um, so what your post should look like is basically like a sandwich. You can start out with your own opinion, how you feel, in the middle, put in something about the article you found, make sure you cite it using the last name of the authors and the year of the article, and then the bottom, you can go back to concluding how you feel, whatever your opinion is. Does that make sense? Now, the in-text citations should always match what's down here. So, freshman and Rubino is also down here. If you have something up here but it's not down here, I know something's wrong. Or if you have a reference down here but there's nothing up here, something's missing. Um, Without the in-text in citation, it's very difficult for me to see what's your idea, what's your opinion, and what you got from the article. So the in-text in citation, again, not only gives that author the credit that they deserve, but it also shows what portion of this came from the article, as opposed to what came from your own mind. Yes? So is that two different authors? It is. Like it is. So when you, when you list your references, you should have the, la the last name, you spell it out, and then the first initial and the last name, first initial, then the year. Um, and, but up here, you just have, all you have to do is list the last name and the year. So it is two different authors. I've seen that in Jessica's Yes, I mean, I don't want to put her on the spot, but since you said it, 
Jessica. If you want a good model to follow. Jessica, because she did yeah. good on hers. Um, any other comments about this? <coughs> All right, we got a few more. Here's a classmate response. What's going on here? Not enough senses. Not enough senses. No reference. No reference. Hey. Who said it? Who no. said it? You said it. What'd you say? Hey. 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 Let's stop there. What's wrong with hey? It's completely unprofessional. Yes. That's kind of how you converse with, you know, somebody out on the sidewalk, right? Mm -hmm. So very good. Anything else? No haze. You say hi, hello, whatever. Hey's kind of a little bit on the casual side. Anything else? I think you guys pretty much covered it. Um, so number one, it's not long enough. Uh, and if you read the sentence, somebody read the sentence. Anybody? Hey, you, yes, you must maintain a strong relationship with employees so that you all will be able to work together on any task. What does it sound like they did here? Answer the question. Instead of explaining why. Okay, they didn't explain why. What else did they do here? What does it sound like in addition to that? They summarized basically what the other person Yes, wrote. all they did was just restate what the person had already done, basically, right? So they haven't put any thought into this. They haven't said what their own opinion is. They haven't, they haven't done anything but just rewrote what the person said, right? We don't, we, we're, we're above that. We're all smarter than that. I'm confident we're all smart, smarter than that. Okay, so we want to make sure you have at least five senses. You want to make sure you have a reference. Um, I want to be able to hear your voice. I can't hear any voice in here. They just, I heard the other person's voice. So when I read your post, I should be able to hear your voice, your opinion, see how you feel. Um, all right, let's go on to the next one. What's right about this one? It's the classmate response. She gave so much detail. She gave a lot of detail. I'll start out by saying this is this is above and beyond. You don't have to do two paragraphs. This is not the standard. This is this is a gold gold star. Um, anyway, what else? What's going on here? She gave her opinion. She excited about. Um, you can tell that she actually read the the person's um, discussion. And right. Took heed to it and gave her own opinion and examples and explained it and also gave a reference. Right. So this person, like you said, you can tell they actually read that person's response and they also gave their own opinion. And, and they found something to back up how they felt. They found an article. Right. Um, so does that make sense? That kind of cleared things up for you guys? Any other questions about how things should look? Um, and I'm gonna be posting this so you'll be able to go back to it. Yes. I did both of my assignments wrong, apparently, based off this. So, like, do I just get a zero or no? No, you work? don't. You, you won't get a zero. I haven't. I haven't graded most of yours yet. Um, like I said um, last week, for the first uh, week, you know, I understand it's new to you guys, so I'm not gonna put the hammer down. Okay. Um, right now, these are learning moments. Okay. So I'm gonna take her first, and I'm gonna take you. Um, you don't need a in text citation for the response, right? She well, just doing some extra stuff. No, she, she had an article, so every time you use an article, you have to give them credit, even in the response. Mm -hmm. So you gotta use the in text citation. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. If you will, I'll be the guinea pig. If you can find mine and and go through it and show us. How you would how you show us what take mine and show me what's wrong. I don't care if everybody else sees it. Yeah, I so haven't. Can extend, so I haven't can. graded them yet. Okay. But, but typically, what I do is I will individually give all of you feedback. Now, with that being said, it's important for you to read the comments because a lot of times students don't read the comments mm -hmm. in, the, in the grade area. There will be comments, so make sure you read the comments because that's where your feedback will be. Okay in the gray area of the grade book or on the discussion board? On the gray area of the grade book. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I did mine wrong too, but um, I don't understand references. Like, what what is that? Like when, you, when you find your article, okay, um, you it you'll list it down here. Where I got it from? Yep. So it's more than one place? If you get it from the library services, it'll, you'll paste it over. 
yeah it'll come it'll come down no it's, it's just the library website the actual article that you use is the one that needs to go here you don't have to list library website or whatever just just the actual article that you use okay. yes so what we did so the health care that first question we did it's not due until this friday no i'm gonna i'm gonna revise the table i think there's an error on the table i'm gonna revise it yeah any other questions Okay, all right, so now we're gonna actually get into to what we are here to talk about. Leadership, how do you define a leader? Strong personal skills. Strong personal skills, hmm. okay. Strong personal skills, anybody else? A person is willing to lead, you have to be a willing ah, person. Willing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's some people in leadership positions that don't want to be there. Right, exactly. You know, it, reflects, it reflects that. Okay. Anybody else? Yes. They have to be well-rounded to be a leader. Well-rounded. Okay. That's a good one. Anybody else? Nobody else? All right. You mind uh, getting the lights for them? I would have to have the knowledge of what you're leading. I mean, you would need to have some type of knowledge, I guess, more than everybody else, more than your peers. So you have to be knowledgeable. Right. Okay. So as somebody who does want to follow you. That's a good one. I'm going to try to see if we can play this video. I know they just updated the office products on here, so you might get to work. All right, we'll try to come back to it at the end of class. You can uh, hit the lights for me. Mr. James, yeah. We'll come back to it at the end of class. <clears throat> All right. We'll start here. Um, so in your chapter, it talks about leadership versus management. There are two differences. Everybody realizes that there's a difference, right? Let's stop right there first. To make sure everybody understands there's a difference between the leader and the manager. Um, so what I have here is a set of different responsibilities and duties and what I would like to do is have volunteers come up and tell me if it's you can write an L for leadership or an M for management next to, next to a task I'm sorry you write on the board yeah you say no more oh who wants to go first I think I see it easy Remember, participation is 25% of your grade. So you write an L or an M. L or an M. All right. Thank you very much. Come on down. Thank you for going first. Thank you. When you write, you have to make sure your hand doesn't uh, touch. touch the board. There we go. Hand can touch the board. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, sir. There's a couple of sides going on. Take the one you want. <laughs> Thank you very much. We got five left. I'm going to Much. 
Thank you very much. Two more. Okay, we got one more. All right, thank you everybody for your uh, participation. Let's take a look at this. What are your thoughts? Think all of these are right? Um, I don't know about regulate compliance. All right. Anybody else agree with her? Disagree? I agree. Yeah. You agree with her that, that it may not be correct. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. By the way, these are in your book. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, all right. Any others besides that one? I think they were speaking with the guy for both of them, didn't they? I don't yeah. know. What, what do you guys think? I think it's yeah, yeah. yeah. both. Okay. So that one could possibly be both. Anything else? Everything correct? Yeah. Sense direction or mission could also be leadership also. Is it leadership or could it also be leadership? Well, it could go both ways, I would leadership. think. So there's a little bit of, we're unsure about that. In the book it's a, it's so a let's put a, let's put a dot by the one we're unsure about. Supervised mm -hmm. services. Supervised services? Mm -hmm. We think that one may be incorrect. Either incorrect or both. Any others? Consoles and blind. For that matter, they could all be <laughs> either one. All right, who found it in the book? I did. All right, so what, what's going, what do I need to change? Um, the first one, the sense of direction and mission should be leadership. That should be leadership. All right. Anything else? Uh, the second um, no, it's not even. This should be management. That's right. Oh yeah, that's management. That's right. Right. Control of resources is the same thing as management. Yeah. Oh, the third one is correct. That's personnel. Is that supposed to be an L or an I think it was an M. Okay, yeah, that's an M. Okay. Supervised. You got a race Are the rest of them correct? No, they didn't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The um, play in soup. Oh, never mind. That's yeah. right. Oh, um. Oh, regulate compliance should be Yeah, regulates compliance should be uh, management. management. All right. Anything else? Yeah. That's it. That's it. All right, so you guys did a pretty good job, right? Um, now, to go back to your statement, there may be a few of these that could go um, management and leadership. Um, but as far as the book goes, this is how it should look. Now, effective speaking, yeah, I think a manager should be an effective speaker as well because they, they're going to be leading their employees. But the leader is the one is the, that is the face of the organization. That's the one that's going to talk to the cameras when the news comes. That's the one that's going to speak in the community. So they absolutely have to be an effective speaker. Um, Now I think this one, the regulates compliance, could also be leader as well, but it's gonna more so fall on the manager more, more than the leader. Um, so did this exercise kind of make it more clear what types of things are duties of manager and, and what types of things are duties of leader? Now you can see the true differences between the two. Um, so this chart is from your book. It gives you uh, an illustration of 
the leadership and management focus. So your management focus is going to be more internal. They're going to be focused on the operations, the management of uh, the employees, um, administration, professionals, all internal. That's the management focus. The leadership focus is more external. So it's more concerned with things that are outside of the organization. So <coughs> you have the media, like I just mentioned, the news, your vendors, the government, strategic partners, financial stakeholders, health policy and laws, and community groups. So those are more the responsibilities of the leader. That's their focus. And they're gonna let the management work worry about the things internally, for the most part. Does that make sense? Bless you. Um, emotional intelligence. Does anybody know what emotional intelligence is? Nobody ever heard of it? No? Um, basically, uh, this focuses on, uh, everybody's heard of IQ, right? Um, well, there's something called EIQ, um, which is basically an emotional intelligence IQ, and it measures um, basically your sense of empathy and compassion with other people. So someone that is emotional, uh, emotionally intelligent is going to be more caring, they're going to have empathy for you, as opposed to um, someone who does not have emotional intelligence. They're gonna be very firm, very rigid. Um, so um, if, if you come to work late because your car broke down, um, a manager that is, does not have emotional intelligence will be like, well, I don't care if your car broke down, I'm riding you up. Um, oh, to speak on that, um I did a paper last semester on a different leadership style between men and women. They, I think would women be more like an emotional. Uh, no. The facts, the, num the numbers, the facts the numbers state that women do have a higher EIQ than men. Now, does that mean that men cannot be emotionally intelligent? No. Um, I worked for some men that you know had very high emotional intelligence, but yes, the numbers do say that women have a higher EIQ than men. Um, so, so good, good comment. Um, you're running late, you come to work late because your car broke down and you have a manager um, that does have emotional intelligence would be, um, they would say something like, you know, I'm sorry your car broke down, um, I understand that's why you got here late. Um, they're still going to do their job, so they're going to, going to say, you know, if your car is going to be out for the rest of the week, please arrange transportation so you can get here on time, but they're not going to be as, um, inconsiderate and firm and rigid about the fact that you're late because your car broke down. Does that make sense? Right. So, um, so if you want to have good fellowship, you want people to follow you, you want people to respect you, you want to try to work to have a high level of emotional intelligence. Any other questions or comments about that? Um, and emotional intelligence is just one um, of the leadership types that you will read about in your chapter. Um, here are a few other ones. So you have authentic leadership, inspirational leadership, diversity leadership, servant leadership, and spirituality leadership. And these are all different types of leadership styles that are more contemporary, meaning that they were created um, later on than some of the foundational leadership styles that were, were created a long, long time ago. Um, some might consider an example like of an inspirational leadership or an inspirational leader, some might consider um, our president to be that. Um, when he initially ran, he was very inspiring. Um, people followed him because he inspired them. So he's an example of an inspirational leader. Um, there's a, a certain level of competencies that you need to have as a leader. And here are a few of them. So you have to be very forward thinking, meaning if, if we were to go back, I'm not gonna go back, but if we were to go back to our exercise, one of the things said uh, sets direction, right? And we put an L there. That's because leaders have to be very forward thinking, meaning they have to be looking ahead at all times. They have to be looking five, 10 years down the road. Um, they have to be good planners. They have to be good at um, creating strategy, things of that nature. So you have to be very forward thinking. As I just said, you're going to be the one to assess the direction for the organization. Um, you're going to be the one to inspire and motivate your employees and your stakeholders. 
Um, if your organization seems to be going down the wrong path or going in the wrong direction, you as a leader are the one that has to redirect them and get them back on the path that they need to go down. So for instance, if you find that um, as an organization you feel that people have started to take shortcuts and not do things the way that they're supposed to, you have to be the one to redirect that um, so that it does not continue and become part of your organizational culture. Um, we already talked about that they have to be an effective speaker because they're the face of the organization. Um, they have to create strategies and they have to be the one to transform the organization. Um, what, what they mean here when they say transform the organization is as an organization you should be continuing to strive to be a better organization. Um, even if you're providing good care right now to your patients, you should be striving to provide great care to your patients. And the leader is the one that um, is the one that the organization will look to to make that change, to make that transformation, to encourage everybody else to go from good to great. Uh, fellowship. So we talked about leaders. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about fellowship. Obviously, um, we know that fellowship is complementary to leadership. So it's basically the opposite of leadership. And we all know that everybody can't be a leader, right? We need to have some followers. We need to have some great followers um, because everybody can't lead. Um, if it's an effective leader or a true leader, then they're going to require commitment from their followers. What that means is that, um, going back to our example about uh, employee arriving to work late, an effective leader is going to require that, that employee to strive for the best, meaning they're going to um, want them to arrive on time the next day, right? They want them to be committed to their job, committed to the organization. Um, in order to have a good followership, the leader can't be self-absorbed. Does everybody know what that means? Somebody give me an example of somebody being self-absorbed. Yes, sir. Uh, being self-absorbed is, is uh, you got your own way and you do everything your way and you never listen to your uh, followers because they also have good ideas. Okay, so only... Only you, you, what your ideas is, is what you put now. All you right, that's a good take one. Take examples from no one else. That's a good one. Did you have your hand up or are you stretching? Okay, anybody else? Do we all know somebody that's self-absorbed? Mm -hmm. Raise your hand. <laughs> Couple? <laughs> All right, so, we, so if you want people to follow you, you can't be self-absorbed. Just like he said, you have to be willing and open to hearing what other people say, hearing other people's ideas. Um, and, and just because you're the leader, you can't think that nothing else matters or not, nobody else is important. So you can't be self-absorbed if you want people to follow you. Um, and uh, going along with that, you have to realize um, how important respect is. Again, it, just because you're the leader, you, sh you can't assume that um, because you are the leader, people have to respect you, because they don't. Um, and so you have to realize that it is important to get respect, and you have to realize how to get respect, meaning you have to build trust, build your credibility, um, all those types of things that you need for people that follow you to trust you, right? That's how they're going to respect you once they trust you and once they see that you're credible. Um, any questions or comments about followership? Um, here are a few more contemporary models of leadership. So at the top we, we have emotional intelligence. We already talked about authentic leadership, inspirational leadership, diversity leadership, um, servant leadership, and spirituality leadership. Now, um, servant leadership. What do you think that one is? Yes. Um, servant leadership, I think it is. In order for you to be a good leader, you have to have been a good follower. Okay. All right. That's a good point. That's a good point. Anybody else? So very similar to what he said, um, at some point you probably had needed to be a good follower, or even when you are a leader. Um, a servant leader is somebody who in their role is still serving, right? Um, maybe if something happens or, or if, if um, the department is short staffed, if, if you're physically and, and um, mentally able to do so, a servant leader is one that's going to go down to that floor and help out, right? Just jump in, um, all hands on board if needed, right? Right. Um, 
All right. To go along with that, there's a few different types or styles. So we have participative, which is very similar to what I was just talking about. That's someone who is going to collaborate with other people and work together. Uh, even, even if they are a leader, they're still going to participate and work with others and collaborate. You have pace setting. These are the ones that are going to uh, set your, your timing, your deadlines, your dates, your things like that. Um, and then you have coaching. And these are the leaders that are going to do basically what it says. They're going to coach. So they're going to encourage and motivate the employees. Um, and that's their style of leading. And I'm sure all of you at some point have worked with all of these types of leaders, right? Does anybody have a good example? Yeah, I got a good one. Okay. So uh, pace setting, if you're a leader, you want to show your people how to do a certain task, but you want to show them in a way where they don't burn out. Okay. Yeah, show them how good. to do it in a, a timely manner without burning out. Okay. All right. Good example. Um, participative, I didn't know this lady personally, but uh, I used to work for a, a detention center in Rockingham. She was the director. If the cook was out, they said she would go up there and cook and everything. Okay. But she didn't have to do that. But she, right. They said she would go in that kitchen because she knew breakfast needed to be fixed or lunch or whatever, and she'd go in there and do it. So that's a good example. Um, she definitely pitched in, um, worked with the other people, collaborated to make sure that the end goal was met, which was to make sure the was it what type of home did detention? detention. So to make sure that the residents there were fed. So so both good examples. Um, and like I said, I'm sure we've all at some point in our lives worked with people with these different types. So these are a, a few of the main ones. Um, and we talked a little bit about this last week. We'll go over it again with the leadership comp competencies. We know that they have to be functional and technical. So going back to Ruth's example, we don't know if that that uh, manager or leader was well-versed in cooking, right? right? We don't know, she, maybe she only knew how to stir the pot or, mm -hmm. or, or prepare the bowls. Um, but there are certain um, technical skills that she must have had to be able to get that job done, right? right. Even if she's not a, a chef or something. So there's a certain level of functional and technical competencies that anybody that's leading needs to have um, they have to have self-development and self-understanding. This goes back to not being self-absorbed. If you have self-understanding, you will understand that it's not just about you, right. and it's about the greater good of the entire organization. Um, somebody said this earlier when we were talking about um, leaders. I think they said strong personal skills. So this is where the interpersonal comes in. You have to have uh, good people skills, your personal skills, and uh, organizational competencies. This goes into being able to have a vision, being able to see the organization as a whole and see where you want it to go. Um, you know, FTCC has X amount of students this year. As a president of FTCC, I want them to have this amount in 2020. Those types of things um, fall under organizational competencies, the ability to, to look forward, plan ahead, strategize, things of that nature. Um, this table is also in your book. But it basically lists different competencies under leadership. So on this side, it has the functional and technical competencies that they would need. And on this slide, it has self-development and self-understanding competencies. So I'm not going to go through all these, but I'll give you a few examples. Under the functional and technical, it says knowledge of business, decision making, problem solving. Over here, under self-development and self-understanding, it has honesty and integrity, um, motivation, empathy, and compassion. Um, so you can see the difference between the self-development and the functional and technical competencies. But as a leader, you should have both. Right. That's just a continuation of the table. Um, so there's some protocols that you have to have, and this will be the last one that I cover today. There's some protocols you have to have as a leader. Which basically means there's some things you need to do and there's some things you just don't do. Um, so number one, professionalism. That should be a given, right? Right. If you're a leader, you need to be conducting yourself in a professional manner. Um, if you're not being professional, you can't expect the people that work for you to be professional, right? Right. Um, you want to have reciprocal trust and respect. What that means is if you want trust and respect, you have to give it. Um, you want to be confident, optimistic, and passionate. 
being visible. This goes back to um, a discussion that we had last week when we were talking about making yourself look approachable. So if you're visible, if you're out walking around, um, it helps. I have, um, I have worked for someone in the past um, who was a leader of an organization and they would eat in the cafeteria every single day. This is a very, very busy person. But every day they would eat their lunch in the cafeteria. Why do you think that this person did that? Make it easier for you know, the ones to come and talk to them. Exactly. He wanted to appear to be accessible. He was being visible. Um, and he would openly welcome anybody to come sit down with him and have lunch or if somebody wanted to, to talk to him. This was his way of showing the organization, hey, I'm here for you, I'm approachable, I'm here, I'm visible, you know where I'm going to be every day. I think he used to go around the same time. So it's very easy for people to find him. Only during that one time, because for the rest of the day, you know, it's very, very busy. Um, so you want to make sure that you're visible. Uh, you want to be an open communicator. And there's some times that you have to take risks. Um, it's scary to do, but you have to do it sometimes. Can't be afraid of taking risks. And last one is you have to be able to admit when you're at fault or when you're wrong. That builds a lot of credibility with your employees. If you're able to stand up in front of people and say, you know, I did this and I was wrong or I took this risk and it didn't work and I'll take the fault for it. Um, it's very big of leaders that can do that. It builds a lot of trust a lot of credibility. Um, does anybody have any questions about leadership protocols? If not, I'm going to stop here um, and then we'll pick it up on Thursday. <clears throat>